Hey guys, Wes here. In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the easiest ways that you can deploy a .NET Core web application to the cloud using AWS Beanstalk. And we can actually use some tooling directly from within Visual Studio to help us do this. So let's take a look. Okay, so here within Visual Studio, I'm just going to select Create a New Project. And here we're going to select an ASP.NET Core web application. And then we can give it any name here just for the demo. Let's call it Cloud MVC Demo. And then we'll select Web Application with the Model View Controller Setup. And so this is going to create an ASP.NET Core MVC project. And it's just going to create some directories for views and controllers and, of course, our models. And we'll deselect Configure for HTTPS for now just to keep things uh, simple. And so now you can see our project has actually been scaffolded out for us. We have a simple home controller here. And you can see that we have a couple of uh, methods in here, an iAction Resolve Index that just returns a view, and the iAction Resolve Privacy that just returns a view. And with these MVC projects, we can see that these will uh, line up with some CSHTML files that we have um, in directories in our views directory uh, that correspond to the name of a particular controller. So by default, this is just kind of the way that things get set up with a new MVC project. Although the point of this particular video is to demonstrate how we can deploy something like this to the cloud using Beanstalk. So the only thing that I'll do here is we'll change this home uh, index CSHTML page. And I'm just going to replace welcome with Cloud MVC demo, and then we'll get rid of this line. Okay, now we can actually run this app locally just using the base configuration here, um, using debug with IIS Express, and this is going to spin up um, a little IIS Express server so that we can actually see our app run locally. Okay, so we can see that our app can be spun up locally here, running on localhost port 63896 in my case, and we can see uh, the small change that we made just to demonstrate um, that we can uh, launch our application. And so I'm going to exit here, and then we're gonna add an AWS extension. So we'll click extensions and then manage extensions, and then searching online here, if we just type in AWS, and then we'll need to select the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio 2017 and 2019. I've already added this to my instance of Visual Studio, but uh, be sure to add it if you'd like to follow along here. This will probably require you to restart Visual Studio, but when it opens, what we'll be able to do is actually from the View menu here, we'll be able to select AWS Explorer. And so here we'll need to select a profile and you can see that I've created a uh, profile here. Um, what we want to do now is actually create a, a role for this, a user for this, so that we can act on behalf of our Visual Studio application here or our user using this instance of Visual Studio to deploy our application. And so let's head over to the AWS console to set that up. Okay, so we're at the AWS Management Console and we need to visit the IAM service here. And so if you uh, can't find it very quickly, then we can just search here, IAM. And we should be brought to the Welcome to Identity and Access Management page. We're going to create a new user here. And so we can select Users here and I'm gonna select Add User. And for Username, I'm just going to call this one VS Deploy Agent. And we're going to give this user programmatic access and click Next. Now we're going to add this user to a group. Um, let's look at how we can create that from scratch here. So our group name here is, let's just call this a Deploy Agents. And we're going to give this group just a particular policy. And so here we want to give them AWS Elastic Beanstalk full access. And so we'll create this group. And the new user that we're adding now will be added to this Deploy Agents group. 
and they even give us a message here, but using groups is a best practice way to manage a particular user's permissions by their particular job function. So in this way, we can give fine grain access to users, um, the resources that they just specifically need to perform some task. And so next we will be able to add some tags here. And if you are using AWS, I would recommend adding tags to all of the resources you create. In general, this will be really useful uh, later on for doing things like monitoring. So in general, we could add key value pairs here for the user that we're creating. Okay, so now we're brought to a sort of summary page and we're just going to go ahead and create this user. Now what we need to do is to take note of the access key ID here and the secret access key. Note that we can also download these as a CSV file. And then we will use these in Visual Studio when we actually launch our app to AWS Beanstalk. So now we're gonna select the add button here and we're going to paste in our access key ID along with our secret access key. Note that we could also simply import this from the CSV file that we exported earlier. Okay, and then for the profile name here, I'm going to select Cloud Deploy. Okay, so now with this set up, let's just simply right click on Cloud MVC demo here over in our Solution Explorer, and we're gonna select Publish to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So we're using our new Cloud Deploy account profile, and here we're selecting a region, uh, of course, AWS has many different regions here. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, we'll just select US West, and then um, we're going to create a new application environment here. It would be possible for us to actually uh, use an existing Beanstalk environment if we'd already created one. Okay, so we're gonna create our application named Cloud MVC Demo, um, and we'll copy and just paste the same name for the uh, environment here with a dash dev. And so our URL will be at cloudmvcdemo-dev.elasticbeanstalk.com. And we can actually just check availability here. URL is available, so we'll select next. We have a number of different options in terms of our launch configuration here. Uh, we'll use a 64-bit Windows Server 2016 uh, running IAS 10. And we're going to bump the instance uh, size down. So we'll use like a T1 micro here for this. Of course, you would want to size your instance type appropriately based on whatever uh, you're launching. For the purposes of a demo, we can just launch using a simple uh, T1 micro instance. And now note that we have the option to select a load balancer. However, we'll simply be running a single instance environment, so a load balancer doesn't make much sense. But assuming that we would want to run uh, multiple instances behind a load balancer, we could deselect this and then we would select between an application, a network, or a classic load balancer. So an application load balancer operates at the request level, and I'll show the OSI diagram here, that is layer seven, and this is suitable for load balancing HTTP and HTTPS traffic. So we would typically use this for any type of modern web app. Um, we could use this for things like microservices or other uh, container-based processes. It offers things like HTTPS support, um, so it supports HTTPS termination between client and the load balancer. Um, it offers a good integration with things like AWS Certificate Manager. You can do things like route to uh, Lambda functions. It supports WebSockets, uh, IPv6, sticky sessions, uh, health checks. So in general, just an extremely um, full-featured modern load balancer that operates at the request layer. We can also choose a network load balancer here, which operates at a lower level in the OSI diagrams. So this actually operates at level four or the connection level, routing uh, connections to targets, uh, which can still be things like EC2 instances and containers. But this is ideal for uh, balancing both TCP and UDP traffic. So this is an extremely sort of uh, low latency, high performance uh, load balancer capable of handling 
bursts of millions of requests per second. So in general, if you're looking for ultra high performance um, in a load balancer that is operating at the connection level or layer four, then we'd be selecting a network load balancer. Otherwise, if we are load balancing typical HTTP and HTTPS traffic, then we'd be selecting an application load balancer here. Uh, classic load balancer is just the previous version of AWS's load balance load balancing service and um, is geared towards like EC2 classic. And so in general, we would want to select between application and network load balancer. For our case, we're going to just simply select a single instance environment. So we won't be even worrying about load balancing for the demo. And then here we'll use our AWS Elastic Beanstalk EC2 role and our service role. So now we have the choice to choose different build and deployment settings here. We'll use our debug any CPU, which you can see is what we used to actually run our app earlier. And we'll be running on .NET Core 3.1. And we can specify a different app path here if you prefer. And we can do things like turn on uh, AWS X-ray tracing support or health reporting. We'll, we'll leave both of these deselected for our case. And I'm just going to select next. And here we can get a basic review of what we're about to deploy here. And we'll now click deploy. So this is going to take a few minutes. But in just a moment here, a window will open up showing us um, basically uh, what's happening as our, as our environment is created and our application begins to um, get deployed. Okay, so once this finishes, and you can see in my case here, this took about nine or 10 minutes, then we should see environment is healthy. And in fact, uh, we have a number of different tabs. We can select here, monitoring, resources. If we turned on AWS X-Ray, we could see some of that information here. So it is pretty neat to have some of these tools actually available to us directly within our IDE. Of course, all of this information is also available either through programmatic access to AWS or yeah, even through the console. So let's just select the R URL here. And you can see that this will actually launch our application. So our app is now running in the cloud and anyone anywhere can actually access this um, directly from our URL. And as you can see here, we can now connect to our app from any other device that is connected to the internet. Okay, that's really all there is to it. I think AWS Elastic Beanstalk is a really great service to reach for if you are just trying to deploy something relatively quickly to the cloud. Um, in general, it is going to be more used if you don't really have a lot of DevOps experience or don't want more fine-grained control over the systems that you're deploying. Um, but for relatively simple projects and really just to get something deployed, I think it's an excellent tool. And it's also really nice to have some of the tooling built into Visual Studio to allow us to deploy whatever we're working on relatively quickly. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.